every once in a while I like to help you get inside of my head and let you know that there's a method to my madness, if you will. So I want to kind of explain via a story time in good old fashioned Tana Mojo style about why I say to stop enabling YouTubers like Tana Mojo and others. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And while you're at it, make sure that you're following me over on Instagram at The Rewired Soul as well as Twitter because sometimes the YouTube notification system sucks. I always tweet out when a new video is going up over on Instagram. I'm trying to get to 10,000 followers so I can get the swipe up feature and I'm so close but anyways follow me on social media I do a lot of stuff over there all right but yeah anyways uh <laughs> it's interesting uh Tristan my beautiful girlfriend's over there taking a nap and like I get I get these ideas stuck in my head and one way for me to get those ideas out is to sit down and record a video right and I look at YouTube as a full-time job because it is aside from you know my writing and other things that I'm doing right but there's a reason why I do what I do, okay? There, there's an, an absolute reason. And those of you who know my channel and you're you're here to improve your mental health, your emotional well-being, and all of that stuff, like I'm trying to use examples that you're familiar with to teach you valuable lessons. So I'm gonna share with you a story, a little bit of st a story of me working in a rehab. And I can give you thousands of stories, literally thousands. I've been thinking about putting them in a book. And by the way, for all of my ethics majors out there, I am going to change the name of people in this so I don't get sued. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's something called HIPAA. So I would never give you the name of you know clients or whoever it is, right? But I will change the names just to help give you a little bit more, you know, into the story, you know, if you will, all right? So there's a there's a story that always comes to my mind about enabling, and I use this story as a way to teach people about what it means to be a good friend, right? And not enabling people. So we're gonna call this gentleman Billy, all right? So Billy was um, a client who came in, and insurance, insurance in the United States isn't that great. Um, like I've mentioned before, I worked at a very, very expensive rehab, but if you had good insurance, you could stay there. But most people could only stay there for 30 to 45 days maximum, even though it's recommended to overcome an addiction that you're in treatment for at least 90 days, right? But um, Billy, who came in, he is somebody who spent most of his life in and out of prison and all that, and he was trying to extend his length of stay as much as possible. And we were pushing to get him 90 days. We have a whole department um, that is uh, always in communication with insurance companies, and they're trying to extend the length of stay, especially if somebody needs additional treatment and all of that. So this dude wanted to stay. Now, one thing that you need to know about uh, rehab or mental health treatment, Tristan even experienced this working at a psychiatric ward, is that there's two types of people that want to stay in treatment, two types of people, right? So there's the first type who wants to stay in treatment because they want more recovery. They want more help. They want more therapy. They want more individual therapy. They want more group therapy. They really, really, really want to work on themselves, right? I love those people. I love anybody who's not trying to get out of there as soon as possible and they want to stay there and keep improving on themselves, right? And it's unfortunate because some people who want to stay there even longer, they have crappy insurance. Well, anyways, then there's a second type of person who wants to stay in treatment. That type of person is somebody who wants to stay in treatment just so they don't have to deal with going back to life, right? Having to go back to work, having to deal with, you know, all the wreckage that they've caused, you know, especially for drug addicts and alcoholics like myself, I totally get that, right? Um, so they want to stay in treatment. Well, Billy, he was the second type, all right? He was somebody who just wanted to stay in treatment just so he didn't have to deal with all the stuff getting back out there. So... In treatment, you have case management and stuff like that. So they're trying to help and, you know, help you find a job and all of that. And Billy was staying in Las Vegas. And part of what I did was I would help people after discharge. So I was trying to help him find a job. Um, I think I was helping him find a job at the local Amazon facility here and stuff. Well, anyways, Billy, being somebody who was in and out of prison a lot, he had that prison mentality. You see this a lot in treatment. One of the hardest parts about 
getting sober or staying sober or even working on your mental health is getting away from the old lifestyle. So anyways, whenever I would do groups, I always I remember this clear as day. Whenever I was doing groups, I'd be doing groups in front of 50, 60 people, you know, educational groups or book studies or whatever. And Billy would be in the back corner over there, like either sleeping or like doing push-ups, like, like that's what he was doing, right? Not paying attention at all. So I'm sitting there and it's none of my business because it's not my job to extend this guy's treatment, but I'm just like, this dude is just trying to milk his treatment stay as much as possible and he's not paying attention to a damn thing. Well, here's where the issue came up with Mr. Billy. So part of what people, um, some people do in prison is they start to get educated, right? Educated about their rights and things like that. That's why I don't really take it too personal when people like get crazy in the comment section because some people think that they're smarter than they are. So what Billy would do was he, he would start to like, try to start this like mutiny with other clients, right? So he would like get other clients together and say, oh, they're not treating us fairly. They're serving us this type of food. They're doing this, right? And like, trust, I worked at a nice treatment facility. Like we're talking about like a chef and you know, like you got a nice place to stay. We had room service, not room service, but like maid service. So you didn't even have to make your bed. That was way different than the way I got sober. And some of you who like went through treatment at a state funded facility or whatever, like you're listening to this like I was, I'm like, oh my God. But anyways, he kept trying to like get all the other clients riled, riled up saying we should talk to lawyers and we should da 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 da. So the staff pulled Billy aside and they said, look, Billy, like we're trying to help you out. We're trying to extend your length of stay. Like we're gonna need you to chill out. Right? So they gave him a warning. They said, if you don't chill out, we're gonna have to kick you out of treatment. So they gave him that warning. Within a day or two, Billy's doing it again. They pull him aside again. They say, hey man, Billy, we're trying to keep you here in treatment, but we can't have you trying to cause problems. Like you need to chill out, right? So it happened again, and it happened again. Four times, four warnings they gave this dude. That's a lot more warnings than a lot of people get, especially in treatment. So on the fifth time, on the fifth time they pulled him aside, and they said, sorry, dude, we got to get rid of you. We got to have you leave, right? And especially in addiction treatment, like, like stuff can spread like a virus. That's why sometimes they're so harsh kicking people out when they bring drugs in and stuff like that, because it could just spread and infect people. Like I got sober in a sober living, one person bringing in drugs, five people would relapse. It's bananas, right? So they end up kicking this guy out. Well, that same night that he got kicked out, I did a gigantic meeting the last uh, week of every single month. And it was at the sober living where like the, both the men and the, uh, and the women clients from both of our treatment centers here in Las Vegas would come together. And it was huge. I'm talking like a hundred plus people. Right. And I would get like my old, my old alumni, like my clients who had been sober, they would sit there and ask questions, give out the phone numbers to support other people. That's kind of why I have like the support group set up and everything. Well, anyways, after that meeting, since it's so big, everybody would come and want to talk to me, right? I get so many people who want to talk to me, you know, ask me questions or thank me or whatever it is, and I love it. But anyways, these young women came up to me and they're like, Chris, 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 you gotta help, you gotta help, you gotta help. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what is happening? What is happening, right? And they're like, you gotta help Billy. Billy, Billy's outside. They, uh, <laughs> they, and I'm sorry to, sorry to giggle. Like I, I was a, I did a bunch of dumb stuff while I was drinking and using drugs too. But anyways, they said, Billy's outside. He's drunk. The cops are here and he's handcuffed on the curb. All right. So basically what happened was after Billy got kicked out, after causing his own problem, this is why I'm trying to teach you guys not to cause your own problems. After he got kicked out, he went out and got drunk. And the reason I giggled is like, I don't know what it is because I have multiple stories like this where people would get drunk or, or high and then come back to treatment, right? After they were like doing something that would get kicked, get them kicked out. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta help him, you gotta help him. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Like this dude had multiple warnings like, sorry, he's gotta pay for, you know, his consequences. Like that's, that's the way this world works, right? Well, anyways, I remember the next day at treatment and we had many situations like this. I was always very grateful that I never had to be the person who made the decision on who got kicked out or whatever, right? Because addiction can be a deadly disease. But I remember the next day, like the tension was high between like clients and staff because a lot of people like this dude, Billy. So I was up there like doing, you know, doing a group or whatever and I kept getting interrupted. I kept getting interrupted. And these guys were like, I can't believe you guys. You guys don't care. He, he's, a, he's sick. He's a drug addict. He's an alcoholic. Uh, you guys don't care. You kicked him out. You guys don't care da 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 and pff, you guys think i give you tough love i said time out time out up in here i'm like you guys want to talk about how we're a bad staff we gave this dude four different warnings and he got kicked out on the five the fifth time 
Who the hell are you? You think that you're a good friend? How come not one of you, not a single one of you, pulled Billy aside and said, yo, Billy, they keep warning you about this stuff. How about you chill out, man? You see what I mean? They were enabling him that entire time. And then when something bad happened, when the consequences caught up to Billy, they want to point the finger somewhere else, right? So this is a prime example of enabling. So that's why I talk about enabling when it comes to Tana Mojo and other YouTubers, right? And it's not just the audience, it's not just the stands, it's their friends and who they surround themselves with. If you look at YouTubers and their friends and who, surround, who they surround themselves with, it's a bunch of people enabling them, right? It's a bunch of people enabling their behavior. Why do you think TanaCon happened? You watch the documentaries. She had a bunch of friends gassing her up. How come not one single person pulled Tana aside and said, yo, you shouldn't be trying to run a convention out of anger. That, that's not good, right? But we as viewers need to think about the part that we're playing in enabling them too. The positive reinforcement that we're giving them, the views, the subscriptions, buying their merch, right? We are, we are giving them positive reinforcement. So why would they stop? Why would they ever stop doing what they're doing when we are enabling that behavior, right? But the second a commentator on YouTube says something bad about that person, you run to their defense, all right? Do you wanna be a friend like Billy had? Do you wanna be one of those people who lets these people get go out there and receive consequences for what they're putting out publicly online do you want to be that person and then sit in denial like you weren't enabling them the whole time right so i also want you to think about this how does this happen with your own friends are you enabling their behaviors i used to surround myself with, with enablers people who sat around co-signing my bs behaviors everything that i was doing and it was keeping me sick all right, this is why I always tell you, the best friends in your life will tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear, okay? And, and I hate to make such a comparison, but when you look at you know the people that have passed away, when you look at people like Mac Miller, when you look at people like Little Peep, when you look at um, other celebrities who have passed away, when everybody on earth knew about the issue, but they didn't do anything about it, right? So I'm not saying Tana Mojo is gonna die, which you know would be a scary thing, because like I've mentioned in other videos, like she abuses prescription medications, all right? We're talking Adderall, we're talking Xanax, we're talking prescription opioids we've seen video of her driving a car while high and crashing it and friends laughing and all of that right so think about that think about that for a second and then we want to push the blame on everybody else or act like there's nothing we could have done about it when we've been enabling these people for years all right so that's what i wanted to say and this was the thing that was on my mind i hope you enjoyed that story time if you want me to do more videos like this kind of explaining like real life scenarios that i've been in that i've dealt with whether in my own recovery or whether working in treatment or whatever like every single thing i teach you on this channel is something that i've witnessed whether it's people failing or people succeeding right i know sometimes it feels like i focus on the negative but i also try to point out when people are succeeding like this whole thing with improving your mental health is not doing what isn't working and finding people who are doing things that do work and emulating that behavior, right? But the problem that we have, which I have more videos coming out on, is people emulate the negative influences and then they wonder why their life is so hectic and a mess. You know what I mean? But anyways, if you like me doing more story time type of videos to kind of intertwine these two things a little bit more without all the, you know, without neuroscience or psychology, just my personal experience, let me know down in the comments below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron, click or tap right there, all right? And please, please don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at the Rewired Soul, and I'm also the same on Twitter, all right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.